what's happening on the other side of the cockpit door. From the National Business Aviation Association, this is Flight Plan. I'm Pete Combs with your trusted source for business aviation news. While a lot of what we talk about here focuses on things that happen on the flight deck, there is, of course, an entire world behind the door separating the cockpit and the cabin. And breaking in doesn't happen overnight. Louisa Fisher with Flight Safety International is the new chair of the NBAA Flight Attendance Committee. I caught up with her at the recent NBAA Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition in Orlando. Louisa, thank you for joining us here on NBAA's Flight Plan. Glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I think flight attendants are the unsung heroes of, of business aviation, and I, I don't say that gratuitously, but I mean that so much goes on behind the flight deck, and it's so important to the viability of our industry. And that's really where you guys live. It actually is. And so if you don't have a good experience back there, and by a good experience, I mean that you have the connectivity to continue your business. So I'm seeing more and more, perhaps in the last 10 years, an ever-increasing amount of these aircraft being used for business purposes. So that for a business perspective, you have to have the full connectivity to be able to speak to whoever you need to, when you need to, as well as be able to reach internet, uh, to be able to show presentations, to be able to bring in group calls. There's just a lot to it. So the amenity in the back has to meet all those elements. And of course, that means flight attendants and technicians who are working the cabin during the flight have to know a lot more about them. Absolutely, because if something goes wrong, the principal is typically not going to run to the pilot. He's going to turn to whoever's in the back and say, make it work. So there's an advantage for these crew members to be fully educated on how to do all those things. Even if it's a matter of just rebooting, they need to know how to do it on that particular aircraft. And that is part of the education they need to have before arriving to the hangar. Are you seeing more of that education becoming available from the OEMs? I mean, where is that coming from and, and how is that presenting itself? We're seeing some of the OEMs are obviously sponsoring this. They're very happy to hear the crew are being trained. It makes their product more functional. Also, the OEMs of the devices themselves, they are also developing training. And of course, the training providers are also trying to meet that need. Some of the issues that you're working with also, I think, have to do with workforce retention and recruitment. But it's not the same situation as we're seeing in the cockpit or in the shop. A little bit different. Uh, the flight technicians may be a little more like the shop in that there's a huge demand going towards commercial. But now the attention seems to be more on the experienced cabin crew member, someone who does know how to work the amenities in the cabin, someone who does know how to work the connectivity in the cabin, someone who has discretion and can meet all the needs of that particular business aviation program. You talked about technicians and that's a growing segment of the flight attendant technician committee membership. Yes absolutely uh, we're hearing more and more flight technicians being brought on these aircraft there's an obvious advantage because as the aircraft becomes a little more complex different little things can happen so it's good to have someone on board who knows how to handle that. They often get also assigned duties that have to do with cabin service and that can be somewhat burdensome because they have a full plate getting the airplane ready and operating the airplane from the perspective of a flight technician. So there's a little bit of a trade-off there typically. Typically these flight technicians will um, provide uh, a, a meal service of a certain level. It may be just a box lunch or something like that, but they must be educated in how to do safe food handling, safe food storage, if that's part of their job description. So it's not that a flight technician can easily replicate what a cabin crew member does, but they certainly are valuable, particularly as these aircraft become a little more complex. And this is more and more the trend, isn't it? It is as lately. For training for cabin attendants, whether they're technical personnel who are also acting as cabin attendants or if they're primarily cabin attendants, what sort of training do you find and what sort of people are you looking for as you recruit flight attendants and technicians? These days it seems to be the most uh, attractive uh, for the position for a flight attendant or a flight technician is someone that has prior experience. That's not saying that someone will never break into the industry. It's not that. There is, there is openings there. However, I would say that most of the larger established business operations prefer to look towards someone who has some experience already. 
they have to be very professional. They have to have discretion, obviously, because they're around sensitive information. They have to have education in all the emergency procedures. They have to have education in the safe food handling and presentation. They have to have a basic understanding of the culture of that particular flight operation because they're all a little bit different. Breaking in. You said it's not like you can't break in, but it sounds like it's pretty difficult. How do you break into that business? Networking is the easiest way. If you know of anyone, which is often someone who happens to know of someone else situation. Right. Uh, I would like to say it's much easier than that. However, business aviation tries to operate very discreetly. It's not something that's typically advertised openly as far as job positions, very much word of mouth. What they're looking for is typically someone, again, who has enough professionalism and flexibility, someone that can be very much a team player, but also can be a complete self-starter. Because when you're operating the back, particularly, you are the person back there doing pretty much everything in the back. It takes someone with a unique blend of talents to be professional enough, quick enough, educated, a self-starter, but a complete team player. How do you prepare for this kind of a career? Let's say you want to become a cabin attendant, what do you need to do to make yourself ready to be the person you just described? To be the person I'm describing, I would recommend the first thing would be to discover what opportunities are available in your area. In other words, is there any business aviation going on in your area? Something that you could actually submit yourself as being available. Typically, the operator's first question would be, what is your training and what is your experience? Those two things. So you would want to have your own emergency training taken care of. You would also want to be able to demonstrate that you've had some experience in the operation of business aviation. That is oftentimes the most difficult part, is getting those first few trips. So I would focus first off on seeing what is available in my area, and then secondly, is there an availability to be able to get some travel or some experience flying with an operator, even if it's something that you have to maybe take a cut in the pay on or you have to offer to do a ferry flight at no charge or something like that to demonstrate that you're competent in the aircraft. Louisa Fisher is the new chair of the NBAA Flight Attendance Committee. If you'd like more information about becoming a flight attendant or a flight technician, let me suggest this. Consider going to the NBAA Flight Attendants and Flight Technicians Conference next year. It runs from the 7th through the 9th of May in Fort Worth, Texas. For more information on that convention and on the committee itself, check out this link, nbaa.org slash F-A-F-T. And that's the latest for the National Business Aviation Association. Remember, you can subscribe to all Flight Plan podcasts at Apple's iTunes website or download them from nbaa.org. I'm Pete Combs. Thanks for listening to Flight Plan.